Hello, my friends. A very good morning. May God bless you all. And listen, this word here is perfect. By the way, this word has been accompanying me throughout my journey of faith. And I don't forget it because from it comes the fountain of life or of eternal death. I would like you to pay close attention because this here leaves no room for doubt, not even a tiny one, because we've been speaking about the love of God, isn't it? Which is unconditional. The love of God suffers all things, waits all things, hopes all things. It's patient and unconditional which means that if the person lives their entire life in sin, but in the last minute, the last second of their life, they convert to him, if they repent and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they are saved for all eternity. God forgets, <laughs> all of their sins, he erases them all and makes them a new person. However, there is also the other side of the coin. If the person lives in integrity, in holiness for their entire life, but in the last minute they deny their faith, they corrupt themselves, then they will die and will go to hell. God's love is perfect and righteous and unconditional, but there are two sides to it, and I would like you to understand them by reading the text of Ezekiel. Once again, Ezekiel. So he says like this, pay attention. Therefore you, O son of man, so he's talking to me and everyone that has ears, that gives attention to his word, say to the children of your people, so tell everyone, Colin, the righteousness of the righteous man shall not deliver him on the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall because of it in the day that he turns from his wickedness, nor shall the righteous be able to live because of his righteousness in the day that he sings. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, but he trusts in his own righteousness and commits iniquity, none of his righteous works shall be remembered but because of the iniquity that he has committed, he shall die. Again, when I say to the wicked, you shall surely die if he turns from his sin and does what is lawful and right, if the wicked restores the pledge gives back what he has stolen and walks in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins which he has committed shall be remembered against him. He has done what is lawful and right, he shall surely live. Isn't it nice? Very nice. And then he says that we, pay attention, 
When the righteous turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die because of it. But when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does what is lawful and right, he shall live because of it. So, dear friends, you can notice here that God loves unconditionally as long as the person is in sin, then they will be condemned to eternal suffering, the suffering of their soul, eternal. But if in the last second of their life, if they have time to do so, they convert, then they will be saved. So all of their sins will be erased and they will have their soul saved. However, if they walk in righteousness the entire life, but in the last moment they let go of their righteous life and they start to you know, think or deny their faith, then they will die and there will be no salvation for them. That's how it is. With God, dear friend, there is no such thing as this emotional love, this human love of kisses and hugs. There is no emotion involved. With God is the following. Yes and no. Either you are or you're not. If a person is righteous until the end, they will be saved. If they are righteous up until two minutes before their death, and then they commit unrighteousness, they will die in their sins. God is not going to consider the years that they walked in righteousness. So, for example, if I live and I've been with my Lord for 59 years, if by any chance I, out of the blue, turn my back on Him or change my mind, then in that moment I'm condemned, unless I repent. Unless I repent indeed, sincerely then, of course not, he will forgive me. But if I don't repent, I will be condemned to eternity in hell. Now, the same thing happens with the sinner, the ungodly, the wicked. If they live their entire life in wickedness, but in the last moment of their life, in their last breath, as it happened with the thief on the cross, isn't it? the good thief. So he converted and he was saved. So that is the word of God, dear friend, which means that God's love is unconditional and perfectly righteous, super righteous. And he makes this available for all of us, for you, for me, Everyone, everyone, here it's very clear, very simple here. He says with clarity, it's very clear. When I say to the righteous, pay attention, I'll repeat it, that he shall surely live, but he trusts in his own righteousness trusting in his own righteousness and commits iniquity, none of his righteous works shall be remembered. But because of the iniquity that he has committed, he shall die. Again, when I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, if he turns from his sin and does what is lawful and right, none of his sins which he committed shall be remembered against him. He has done what is lawful and right, he shall surely live. Of course, that when a wicked person converts, they don't just convert in their heart. They start to practice. By default, they have to start practicing what is good, righteousness. But what I'm saying here, 
summarizing here is what happens in the last moment of that person's life, which is, for example, we had two cases, the two thieves that were crucified with Jesus, one on his right, another one on his left. So one recognized that he was a sinner. Both of them initially were accusing Jesus. Initially, they were telling Jesus, look, save yourself and save us as well, since you are God anyway. But as time went by, one of them saw that Jesus wasn't like them. And he recognized that Jesus was the Son of God, the Savior, that only he could save their soul. So in his last moment, he said, Lord, remember me when you enter paradise. And Jesus, looking at him, said, Today still, I tell you the truth, that today still you will be with me in paradise. But the other one continued mocking Jesus and died mocking Jesus and went to hell. So this means the following. This is a classic, a clear, very good example. Anybody can understand this. Anyone understands this. If the person converts until the last moment, they will be saved. But if the person gets lost in the last moment, they will also be condemned. That's why Jesus says there in his letters to the church, he says like this, pay attention. He said, remember, therefore, remember where you have fallen. Remember, therefore, where you have fallen. Jesus is still giving the tip here. He corrects the angel of that church, one of the seven churches. And that's what has been happening. Many people who consider themselves righteous because they don't do evil to anyone and they end up considering themselves righteous. But in the time that they die, they will see that their righteousness was actually a filthy rug. And then there is no more way out. But if the person walks in filthiness, in dirt, in sin, and in the last moment, of course, if they have time, the thief on the cross didn't die straight away. Both of them had time to convert, to repent. Both of them had time. And a lot of people actually have time to convert. Some don't, right? Death comes unexpectedly. The person is not expecting. The person has a heart attack. And they go and there is no more chance. Some others, they are in coma for a while. My brother, for example, was in coma for several months. And I believe that God allowed him to be in that situation so that he would have time to repent. So, this is what you have to be attentive to, dear friend. God's love is unconditional. It doesn't mean, though, that the wicked that dies in their wickedness will live eternally with the righteous who walked in righteousness. No way, because God's love is unconditional, but is righteous, perfectly righteous. Don't forget that, dear friend. I will leave the text in the caption here for you to always remember what God himself commands his servants to declare to announce, to shout from the rooftops so that everyone may know that his love is unconditional, however, it's based on righteousness, okay? So today, as we speak of love, we are going to have the love therapy in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God. Come to learn how to love so that you can learn how to be loved. Yes, that's it. In the love therapy, you learn how to love. 
which means that you learn how to sow, so that you can learn how to harvest the fruit of love. May God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.